Hey everyone, welcome to another video by Simply Learn. Today's topic is JavaScript promises. In our previous few topics, we learned about arrays, functions, and loops. However, this time we're going to take a step forward and then learn about promises. But before we begin, make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon to never miss an update. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Now you must be wondering why JavaScript promises even came into picture and what exactly these promises are. So don't worry, I've got your back. In today's video, we're going to learn about promises, why they were introduced and also I'll explain their functionality. So let's go ahead. First up, why JavaScript promises? Now, JavaScript is predominantly single-threaded, meaning all processes contain the execution of instructions in a single sequence. So basically, in simple terms, one command is processed at a time. Now, if a function relies on the result of another function, it basically has to wait for the other function to finish and return. And until then, the current function remains idle. Now, this can be extremely frustrating because it's time consuming and very restrictive. I mean, you're not using the system to its full capability. So to overcome these drawbacks, asynchronous concepts or asynchronous programming came into picture. So in this case, the main thread continues its execution while JavaScript allows long network requests and other tasks to happen simultaneously. Now, with the help of features like callbacks, promises, and async await, asynchronous programming can be easily achieved. I hope now you understood why promises or asynchronous programming came into picture. Moving on, what are JavaScript promises? Now, in the case of synchronous actions, you could, instead of arranging for a function to be called at some point in the future, return an object that represents this future event. This is what the standard class promise is for. Now, a promise is basically an asynchronous action that may complete at some point in the future. And when it's completed, it produces a value. Now, it is able to notify when its value is available. The easiest way to create a promise is by calling the promise.resolve method. Now, this function ensures that the value you give it is wrapped within a promise. Now, a promise basically has three states. First up is the pending state. Now, this indicates that the underlying operation has not yet been completed. Next up is the fulfill state. This indicates that the promise has been fulfilled with a particular value. Lastly, we have rejected. Now, this indicates that an error has occurred during the operation and the promise is rejected with a particular reason. Moving on, a promise is said to be settled when it is either fulfilled or rejected. Because remember, promises are immutable. They cannot change their state. So once they're either fulfilled or rejected, they're said to be settled. So when a promise is fulfilled, it has to do a particular job. So for that, we make use of the then method. Now the then method basically runs for a result, and this is used to attach a callback when the promise has been resolved. All right, same with the case of the scenario when the promise is rejected. It makes use of a catch method, which is used to attach a callback when the promise has been rejected. Don't worry, you'll understand the concepts better when we get to the demo. So moving on, let's look at a quick flowchart to understand promises better. First up, you have a new promise. Now the promise is in the pending state. Now this promise runs for an asynchronous action. Now we check if the action is successful. If it is a yes, then we call the then method. And if it is a no, then the catch method is called. And to end it, if it is fulfilled, then the asynchronous action is performed. And if it is not, that is if it is rejected, then error handling is performed. And lastly, the values of these methods is returned to the promise. I hope this was clear. So moving ahead, let's look at the general syntax. You can use the let keyword and provide a name for your variable. And then you create a new promise. Now this promise object takes a function, which in turn takes two parameters, that is resolve and reject. So to help you understand all of this better, let's go ahead and look at a simple demo. So in VS Code, I've created a folder called demo promises, 
within which I've created an HTML file named promises. So I have the initial code ready here. So let's begin typing our code. So let's say script. And here, as I explained, we say let and let's give the name car to our variable. Say car and we create a new promise. All right. So the promise object returns a function which takes two parameters called resolve and reject. All right. So within the function, let's define a simple use case. Now let's assume that we're checking the car for its fuel. All right. So we'll create a variable called fuel underscore full tank. Now let's set the variable to say true, all right? Now let's set the variable to true. Now this indicates that the fuel tank is full. So now if the fuel tank is full, what I can do is I say resolve, all right? Else I reject it. Okay, I hope you understood what I'm doing here. I'm just checking for the fuel tank. And if it is full, which is true, then it gets resolved. And if it is false, then it gets rejected. So if the promise gets resolved, the then method is called, right? So let me call it here. I say car dot then. Now this runs a result, right? So it's a callback function. within which I say document dot write the fuel tank is full happy driving all right and if it is rejected I say dot catch which also returns a function That says document dot write. Let's just display a simple message saying that the fuel tank is not empty. All right. So let me save this and execute it. So here it displays the message the fuel tank is full, happy driving. Now that happens because we've set the value to true here. Now in case we change it to false, let's see what it displays. All right, it displays the message, the fuel tank is not empty. So this was a simple example showing how a promise works. Now let's go ahead and understand nested promises. So for that, let me just comment this out. And now, Let's create a function that returns promises. So in our case, what we're going to do is first we'll check for the fuel tank. Now in our case, we're taking a scenario where the fuel tank is empty and the engine of the car is overheating. So as a result, the car is not safe for traveling. All right, so let's go ahead and create these functions. So I'll say let empty underscore tank. Okay, which returns a promise. So within which I say return new promise. And the function takes two parameters. That is resolve and reject. Within which I'm going to display a message saying resolve which says the car doesn't have enough fuel. All right. Now let me just copy the same piece of code to check for the engine. All right. 
so let me just change the name of our variable here let's call it engine and here it displays the message the engine is overheating all right and lastly when both of these scenarios hold true that is the car doesn't have enough fuel and the engine is overheating we say that the car is not fit for travel let me just call it travel and here i'll display a message saying the car is not safe for traveling all right so right now we've created three functions that returns promises so first we check for the empty tank right so let me just call the function here empty tank and we make use of the then method which is executed when the promise gets resolved which takes a callback function all right so basically when we check for the empty tank after this is executed we check for the engine right so here we simply call the engine function so let me just say return engine all right now this is a nested promise in itself so on top of it i can run the then method again so if the tank is empty and if the engine is overheating then i'll just check if it is safe for traveling or not so let me say function and here let me just return the method travel all right now after this if all of these are executed then i say function finally i'll display a message saying saying done all right so let's save this file and execute it so here i go ahead and click on promises let's go and check our console and there we go the message done is displayed so here since every time the promise is being resolved a message is displayed i can basically catch the message in a result okay and this result can be passed to the coming methods so here i just say result i say result again all right so now we get the message the car doesn't have enough fuel so we have to append it with the next message so let me just say message here i've used msg and let's just append it here and the final message gets appended here with result okay i have to add message here as well all right so let's save it and execute the file all right so here you can see the message done gets displayed first and then since we're appending it after the message done it says the car doesn't have enough fuel the engine is overheating the car is not safe for traveling so this was how you can make use of nested promises so with that we come to the end of this video i hope you understood the concept of promises if you have any doubts or queries let us know in the comment section below we're going to come up with more videos on javascript Until then keep learning and stay tuned to simply learn Hi there if you like this video subscribe to the simply learn youtube channel and click here to watch similar videos to nerd up and get certified click here